This is our old sail cover. You saw us take it off in tension for the last time in episode 11. I'll put a link in the upper right of the video if you're watching this on a computer. The sail cover did its job, protecting our mainsail from ultraviolet rays when it wasn't being used to move in tension through the water. But it was old. We really have no idea how old, but it was worn out in a few places, and a few of the zippers were starting to come apart. Beyond being old, it was a pain to take off so that we could go sailing, and it was even more of a pain to put back on. This meant that we would actively avoid hoisting the mainsail just so we could avoid the extra effort of taking it off and putting it on again. This goes against the way we wanted to sail in tension, so we decided we wanted a new sail pack. And this is the new sail pack. The sail pack's just a big cloth bag that attaches to the boom of a sailboat and zips closed at the top. With a sail pack, you basically just pull open the zipper and hoist the sail, and when you're done, you lower it back into the pack and zip it shut. I'm oversimplifying here, but honestly, not by much. We briefly toyed with the idea of hiring a canvas shop to sew a new sail pack for us, but the estimates that we got were pricey. Uh, I get that, labor is expensive, and so is pretty much everything associated with a boat. Enter Sailrite. While doing research on sail packs, I found a YouTube video by Sailrite that detailed every step involved in making a sail pack. I'll put a link to that video in the description down below and in the upper right corner of the screen here. Anyway, after watching Sailrite's video, I realized that I already had all the sewing skills I needed to make our own sail pack. We bought a kit that included literally everything we needed to sew the sail pack and an LSZ1 walking foot sewing machine for about the same cost as the sail pack was going to be from a canvas shop. Like I said in episode 11, the Sailrite video made the process look so easy that I knew we could do it. If you can sew a straight stitch, you can sew a sail pack. We're not trying to replicate the Sailrite instructional video here. All we're trying to do is document what it was like for us to sew it. We highly recommend that you watch the Sailrite video for details on what measurements you need and how to follow through the instructions step by step. Here we are in our condo. We've pushed all our furniture over this way because we're starting to sew the sail pack today. The bolt of fabric that we got is 60 inches wide and the main body of the sail pack that we have to sew is 190 inches long plus we have to add 6 inches for seam allowances. So that's we need a 196 inch run of fabric. Um, and 60 inches wide. So we've pushed all the furniture out of the way so we can do that here. Um, all of the steps that we're going to follow are really well done in sale rights, uh, making a sale pack video. And I'm going to put a link to that in the comments below, or sorry, in the description below. Um, I'd advise you, if you're at all interested in this, even just idle interest, go and watch that video. It's a great video. We bought the complete sail pack kit from uh, Sailrite because it had all of the components we needed and it was going to be about the same cost as trying to figure out how much material we needed for each. They've already done that for the size of boom that we have, a 16 foot boom. Um, we're making a few modifications and adjustments to that, uh, particularly the way it's attached to the the boom and uh, a little bit the way that the battens that will hold the top of the sail pack up are mounted to our lazy jack system. Uh, we're going to cover that in a little more detail in sections within how we sew this. Do you have anything you want to add? <laughs> no, as usual, John has covered all the talky points. <laughs> All right, so we're going to now um, mark out the first part of our uh, sail pack and um, I'm going to do voiceover with the specific measurements that we took and how we're transferring that to this yeah. piece of fabric. Enjoy! Hopefully Exciting. this doesn't take us a month. <laughs> 
I don't think it will. Bye. Bye. The Sailrite kit comes with a thorough step-by-step -step guide showing everything you need to do in clear and simple terms. First, you need to take some measurements at the boat. Start with your flaked mainsail on its boom and take a measurement along the foot, that's the bottom of the sail. Then measure the circumference of the flaked sail at the thickest part near the mast, and again 24 inches forward of the clue or aftmost part of the sail. Our boom is quite thick, almost 6 inches, so we measured from a point closer to where the foot of the sail attaches to the boom around to the same point on the other side. We transferred those measurements to the fabric hot knife time, and cut it out using a hot knife. This was one of the most difficult steps we had to do because we needed to have a clear flat space that was about 16 feet by 5 feet. Uh, so take that into consideration if you want to sew your own sail pack. Once the port and starboard sides of the sail pack were cut though, everything could be laid out in smaller sections. So that space is really just a one-time requirement. So we have now cut two identical pieces of sombrella that form the two sides and the tops of our uh, upcoming sail pack. The beauty of sombrella is that there's no right side and wrong side. It's exactly the same on both sides of the fabric. So we can make either of these pieces either side. At this point, though, it's really important to start marking what is the port side, what is the starboard, what's inside, and what's outside. So we're going to use the same marking scheme that some or that Sailrite recommends, with P out, P in, S out, and S in for the port outside, port inside, starboard outside, and starboard inside measurements. So what we're going to do is lay these two pieces of fabric on top of each other the way they would be facing in the uh, sail pack and then we're going to label starting at the top, port out, port in, then starboard in, starboard out on each face and layer. Are we also going to do top and bottom? Uh, top and bottom is obvious because of the angle. Oh, uh, yeah. Right, the one without the the as uh, right angle is the top. Yeah. But we can do that. That's not a bad idea just to stay oriented. I like yeah. that. Because so when it's all smooshed together, we're not going to, like, when we're actually sewing it, we may not be able to see that angle. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think it's worth the added effort now that you mention it because okay. um, if we don't need it, great, but it might save us from sewing something on the wrong edge. And by us, I mean me. So, <laughs> okay, we're going to do that too. All right. So, it's surprising how easy it was to uh, get disoriented once the pieces were up on the kitchen table at the sewing machine. Uh, so I really can't stress strongly enough how important it is to carefully label your pieces just like I am here. So we're going to move on to the next step here, which is to mark a line, a parallel line to this sloped edge, 13 inches down on the inside of each piece. So again, that's why it's important that we've marked each of the pieces. We have starboard in and port in both facing up, and now we can just mark a straight line along that um, edge. One of the things we're doing is we have a transition to carpet right behind me here and it's harder to measure all across that transition and on carpet and be accurate. So we're doing all of our measurements and pulling the fabric onto our hardwood, hardwood surface here. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain, but we're doing it. I've sped the video up 400% here because it's kind of boring to watch people mark measurements down onto fabric. But, um, truth be told, it's also funny as heck to watch Donna and I moving so quickly at our age. Enjoy! Once again, I just want to point out here that the instructions that Sailrite gives you are very clear and easy to understand. Just follow them step by step and you will have no problem making a sail pack for yourself. Um, 
Hi there. So we're going to move on now to the next step of sewing this sail pack. And generally we're following the instructions that Sailrite sent on creating the sail cover. Um, but one of the things is we're making changes to the way that the lazy jacks are mounted uh, to the sail pack. And so I'm going to mark out now for reinforcements to the where the lazy jack lines will go through the, the cover. So at each of those lazy jack points, we're going to reinforce it with Dacron. In the instructions, they only reinforce the aft end of the batten pocket with Dacron. We're going to reinforce each of the batten locations where the lazy jack comes through, as well as the front, because why not? So what I've done is I've gone out to the boat with Donna's help and we've measured where the lazy jacks will intersect the top of the sail pack. They can be off by a little bit, that doesn't matter, it's just an approximation. We're going to go to the far end here and we're going to uh, measure back and we'll mark where the 6 inch um, Dacron patches that I'm going to sew inside the batten pockets will be located. So we're going to do that now. So I've marked those six inch segments where the Dacron patches are going to be sewn in and now we're going to use the seam stick basting tape and baste them into uh, their spot. We're not going to show that. Uh, that's the same as the sale right instructions in the video show. Okay, so we have measured for our lazy jack modification. We've increased the um, the top the way that the instructions say. We cut 10 of these 6 inch by 5 inch Dacron patches to reinforce each of those points along the crease. We then realized that the batten material that we're able to get is 15 feet and what we need is 16 feet 4 inches. So we're about 8 inches short on either end. That doesn't really matter because each end is pulled taught by shock cord to the topping lift at the aft end and to the mast at the forward end. But it does mean that if we sewed a six inch wide piece in the aft end and then didn't have a batten for eight inches, there'd be no batten protection. So what we've done is we've cut one foot pieces of Dacron, which we're now gonna fold and we're gonna sew into either end of the batten pocket. So we have now attached these Dacron patches uh, with the seam stick tape. Um, at each end we have a one foot patch and then these are the spots where the lazy jacks will come through and take up pressure on the battens. Um, so the next step is to sew these in and that's just the same as you see in the Sailrite video. And this is what those Dacron reinforcements look like once they're sewn into the sail pack. Hi there, and welcome to day two of uh, working on the sail pack. Now, I say day two, it's the second calendar day we've been working on it. We've only done an hour and a half or so work in cutting out and doing these initial seams. Um, my guess is it would be another three hours or so of work, but I'm going to, I'm keeping track of the time and I'm going to give a total when we're done the project. One of the things that I noticed was we went out to the boat to take some additional measurements and I noticed that the aftmost lazy jack line seemed to be um, much further back than the measurements that I'd taken. And so I retook the measurements and yes, it looks like I'm off by as much as eight inches. Um, so what we're going to do is sew in an additional Dacron 
uh, pocket for the batten attachment aft of where this uh, Dacron uh, pocket is and that will allow us more leeway as to where we're going to put that um, that lazy jack attachment. All right. Okay, so um, Donna is not teeny, teeny, tiny. I mean, she is tiny, but this is forced perspective. I'm much closer to the camera. That's why I look huge. Um, these are our Dacron pocket patches for the Lazy Jack, um, where it will attach to the battens. We're using Dacron on the inside to provide additional chafe protection, and we're going to replicate on the port side the additional pocket patch that we added on the starboard side. Just to show you, we have pre-applied uh, actual sail rate seam stick to these Dacron patches. We used the generic basting tape on the previous Dacron patches and what we found was they really didn't stick well enough to the um, umbrella <clears throat> in trying to manipulate this 16 foot long piece of fabric in the sail rate. So um, this uh, name brand seam stick sticks much much better. So right now we're going to um, fold over our crease and mark our um, our patch locations, stick them down, and then sew them on. I'm going to take some footage showing me sewing these patches on just to show you what it looks like. I know I've said this before, but seriously, if you can sew a straight line, you can easily make this sail pack. Sure, it can be a little challenging to wrangle 16 feet of umbrella at times, but just take things slow and roll the fabric up and you'll have no problems. Even though Sunbrella is a robust synthetic canvas and the sail pack construction includes spots where there are six or even eight layers of fabric, the Ultrafeed LSZ1 never struggled or bogged down. It sewed like an absolute champ, pulling the work through without even a hiccup. It's not an inexpensive machine, but it really did make sewing something as big and sturdy as this sail pack an absolute breeze. I think it would be possible to sew this uh, sail pack on a lighter duty sewing machine, but you would probably have to help the machine by manually rolling the balance or hand wheel to guide the needle through many layers of fabric. You have to consider how much of a pain in the bottom it's going to be trying to use a smaller sewing machine. Sailrite didn't recommend using seam stick to base this top seam while sewing, but I found it really challenging to keep the creased fabric lined up over the full 16 foot length when I sewed the port side. I decided to use the generic basting tape I bought from Amazon on the starboard side, and honestly, I think it was a lot easier. This might not be necessary for a smaller sail pack or for more experienced sewers, but as a relative sewing novice working on a big sail pack, I think the added basting tape will make your life a lot easier. One comment here. The only real criticism I have of Sailrite is that I think they should include more seam stick with the 16 foot boom sail pack kits. They include one roll of 50 yards of seam stick basting tape, but the instructions call for eight full length strips of seam stick plus the full height of both sides and aft ends of the sail pack. Eight lengths of 16 feet is 128 feet, pretty close to the full roll of seam stick provided. If you're ordering one of these 16-foot kits, I'd recommend ordering an additional roll of seam stick to make your task easier. And this is what the starboard side of the sail pack looks like once all the seams are sewn. As you can see, we could use our hallway to lay out the full piece now that the aft end was narrower than the width of our hallway. I'm really proud of the way this turned out. The next phase of sewing, the next set of instructions is to actually sew the batten pocket in the top seam um, and we're going to defer that for two reasons. One, we're not using the PVC pipe that Sailrite used. We have purchased um, sail, proper sail batten material um, and it is smaller in, sorry, its width than the pipe is in diameter. 
by just a little bit. It's five eighths versus three quarters. But more than that, it is flat rather than being a pipe, a, a cylinder. So we don't need as big a batten pocket and I'd actually like to recruit as much space as possible into the top zipper patch um, as possible. So until we get that batten material, I'm not going to sew that batten pocket uh, in place. This next step after that is to sew in this long zipper chain. Uh, we have 25 feet of zipper chain. We need about 16, maybe 17 feet of that for this. One of the issues we found when we laid this out though, is that the two sides are slightly different sizes. It was hard to measure though, because we were measuring the other way across our condo, which went over a transition here between the hardwood and the carpet. And so what we're gonna do here is we've laid this out down the hall and we're going to um, measure accurately the discrepancy between the two sides when they're both laying on top of each other on the hardwood. So that's what we're going to do now. And if you can pull it towards you just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, we're good down here. you'll see that these two sides actually line up pretty much perfectly. I was concerned I was going to have to fold this a bit and sew another seam, which would have been fine, but I really like the way this is lining up. I think everything's good. Mm -hmm. so sewing in the zipper chain was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I'd always been intimidated by sewing in zippers before, but with the seam stick and the clear instructions that Sailrite provided, it went smoothly. Here you see me sewing the final bottom seam of the starboard side of the sail pack. I sped the footage up by a factor of five so you can see how I wrangled 16 feet of sail pack. Don't worry, I don't sew that fast in real life. I discovered that I ran out of batteries partway through filming that and I set a whole bit to the camera, but nobody got to hear it. Um, this is what the seam looks like after finishing it. And looking down the length of this 16 foot long sail bag piece, I'm very pleased with the way everything's turned out. The zipper teeth are hidden. The batten pockets will take up some of this space, but there will be plenty of space for the um, top of the sail pack. And um, I think we're ready to move on to the next step. Yesterday, we laid out the lines on the starboard side uh, piece of the sail pack on the floor in our hallway, at the, our condo. And that worked well, but I'm 60 years old and it was really kind of painful uh, being on the floor for that long. So what we're going to try today is to do it here on our um, dining room table that opens up into quite a wide surface. Um, the lines that we're laying out are based on these reference points, the, this inside uh, cut and this inside cut. And so what we're going to do is just work four feet at a time four times across the 16 foot length of this. Hopefully that'll be easier. Working on the table was undeniably easier on my back, but it wasn't without its own challenges. Every time we moved the piece, we had to realign things to make sure that our straight lines were still straight. In the end, I don't think we saved any time or even effort with this experiment. Of course, it would have been a lot easier if we had a 16 foot work table at our disposal, but we didn't. Um, if, if you get the sale right sale pack, you'll get these instructions and they have a whole lot of information in them, which is really good. What I've found though is that it's designed for one size of boat and intention is quite a big boat at 42 feet. It has quite a big boom at 16 feet. 
And so the sale is a lot bigger than I think the sales they intend these for. So I've had to upscale some of the measurements. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to use this two inch nylon webbing that came with our kit, but we've extended it by an inch because we weren't getting enough working space here to go under um, or through the sail in the four spots that these webbing straps are going to go. These straps are going to go at the very front of the sail, at the tack, um, which if you know anything about sails, that's the lower part of the sail that attaches to the boom um, or to the, the boat. Um, they're also going to go at the very back of the sail, at the clue. Uh, that's the part that um, is the back part of the triangle of the sail. Um, and each of those is going to go under an attachment for the sail. Then we're going to cut two slits in the uh, base of the sail at the uh, in between the reefing lines, in between the um, third and second reefing line and the second and first reefing line. We could have cut slits everywhere on the sail and it would have actually made this installation a little faster and easier, but we don't want to cut slits in our sail if we don't have to. It is a recommended procedure by, um, or a recommended alternative by Sailrite, but we didn't feel comfortable in that. So anyway, we're extending this um, working space by about um, an inch and a half uh, with our added measurements. Whenever I've made changes to the instructions that we follow, I document them in the sale rate uh, workbook. That way I know when I go back, if someone asks me, how did you deal with X? I have notes of how we dealt with it. The other attachment we're going to use is these Dacron strips. Um, we did that proof of concept with the Dacron strip yesterday, but that was a single thickness of Dacron and we found that even just feeding it in once, it wore on the edges and was starting to, to fray fairly quickly. So what I've done here, if you can see, is I've taken a wider strip of Dacron, I've folded it over, so this edge and this edge are now um, uh, intact. They haven't been cut. And then I've sewn a zigzag stitch down the seam between them. I used basting tape to hold them together while I did do that. Then what we're going to do is um, fold this over and make a, a seam at the end, just like we will with the webbing material. And then I'm going to use a tool that I bought from Sailrite. You can buy these from other places too. Um, this punches the hole for the twist lock uh, grommet or the twist lock eyelet, I think they call it on Sailrite. It cuts the central hole and it cuts the four slots for the, the um, metal uh, fastener ring to go through. So I'm going to take these outside, use this to punch holes through here uh, using a piece of wood backing, and um, then I'll come in and I'll attach them. That's all uh, consistent with the way that um, the cell right videos show it being done. So I want to show you um, one little trick or hack, if you want to call it that. Um, what I've done is I've used basting tape to take to baste all of these Dacron strips at once, and I've laid them all out with the one and a half inch overlap that I want. Now I'm going to sew them all in a line on the um, sail right, and uh, it's going to help me. Um, sew it faster as well as not waste too much thread in between each uh, each piece. I do have to bar tack or back track um, back stitch on each end though so I have to remember to do that as I'm feeding it through. Well that went so much better than I even imagined it would that I have to do this little piece to camera to let you know. So once again if you look at this tool um, you can see that it has this oval cutter and then four teeth. These teeth are replaceable. That's part of what makes this one more expensive than some of the other tools that you can see. I used this um, 
soft-ended mallet. It's a 16 ounce um, soft-ended mallet to hit this because if you use a metal hammer on this, eventually you're gonna damage the tool. I figure better not to do that. And honestly, this was plenty strong to cut through the material. And I'll show you that right here. This is one of the Dacron strips. So here it cut through four pieces of Dacron and with no effort whatsoever. Here it cut through two layers of um, nylon webbing. Again, no difficulty whatsoever. It also cut the slots for the teeth for the, um, the eyelet to go through. So now we're going to assemble that. So this is one modification that I'm making to the original plan. I've just used some scraps from the offcut, actually the upper part of the, the sail pack that was offcut from the main body of it and made these double layered covers that will go over the hardware. And what that's gonna do is just keep these metal parts from rattling against the boom as the sail pack moves around. Um, so I'm gonna sew it from this stitch line here, up, across here, and down. And that's just gonna hold this um, down, but we'll still be able to flip this up to get at the, uh, the fittings underneath. All told, we spent about 16 hours laying out, cutting, and sewing this sail pack. The hardest part of the whole process was figuring out how to attach it to the boom. So my advice is to raise your mainsail and figure out how to attach the sail pack first. We probably could have finished this process in under 12 hours if we hadn't spent a bunch of time on laying out an attachment scheme that we later just abandoned. Still, this was the first time that we've sewn or installed a sail pack, so I'm not being too judgmental about our process. This experience was so positive that it has inspired me to tackle a bunch of other sewing projects on board. I'm going to sew weatherproof cushions and sheet bags for the cockpit, a new binnacle cover for the helm station, and eventually a full enclosure to keep us dry and cozy while sailing in inclement weather. Thanks for watching! Please like this video if you found it useful, and subscribe to our channel if you're not already a subscriber. Also, please do leave comments. There's a ton of information that we didn't include in this video because it's already pretty long, but we're always happy to share. If our experience can make things easier for you, we'll be happy. See you next time.